interesting how technology has evolved in so many ways and so many areas of our lives in the present day that it's funny how a quick Google search and you can find old ancient blow up love dolls even on the Walmart website and affordable also only $21 and yeah however back then these original love dolls were just blow up air and plastic and nowadays with so much realism in love dolls or female robots or human-like companions and for the sake of keeping this video somewhat clean and monetized we're not going to use the s word but call them what you want to call them we really are living in a euphoric technology time period paradise. That is, if you want to call them your dream girls. All that's truly really missing is these giant robotic corporations with the know-how to make them fully autonomous stop holding back technology that will propel us into the future. Of course, when these human-like robots will walk among us, fully autonomous with artificial intelligent brains. Interesting how talking about Walmart and being able to find these blow-up love dolls in their stores, that many Walmarts and other grocery stores in the United States have actually turned to robots to help and now we're going off topic from love dolls, but just focusing on robots in the workplace. But that many Walmarts and other grocery stores in the United States have actually turned to robots to help restock shelves and help out around the stores. However, unfortunately, that probably means a lot of people are losing their jobs. But anyway, check this out. Living below the poverty line. The grocery industry is a low margin one though, and Canada's food professor, Dr. Dr. Silva Charlebois, tells me this metro strike could speed up growing automation and robotics in your local grocery store. Take a listen. Instead of running a grocery store with 80 FDEs, full-time employees, they could actually bring that number down to say 50 or 55 instead. And, and the way to do that is to use more automation, robotics, and AI. You're saying now that this could lead to more automation at the grocery store, Silver? I would say so, yeah. With fresh products, inventory can turn twice, three times a day. If you can actually get someone else or something else to do that instead of a human, uh, your costs become much more predictable. That robot viz we're looking at right now, this is not a concept. These are actual robots that some U.S. stores are employing to restock their shelves, something that perhaps could be on the way here in Canada. Metro stock down just over half a percent in today's trading session. Erica. Looked like it was moving pretty slowly, though. There, for sure. All right. I know it's it's not a good thing. You know, I mean, we you know these are uh, you know these are important. <laughs> Brain time. Congratulations, you made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck and all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video. Thanks to decades of graphic novels and sci-fi movies, it's easy to think of humanoid robots or just robots as technology nightmares that will one day replace or surpass the human species. In fact, if you've watched one or more of my videos here on YouTube, then it's safe to say we know what to expect if we're talking about our future civilization, when or if humanoid robots will walk among us. So how do we get to the year 2077, fast forwarding past the year 2050, when for sure by then our humanoid robots and companions will have become so far advanced in artificial intelligence, they will walk among us. 
Will the team behind robotics, machine learning, and AI at the Toyota Research Institute in California had this to say recently about robots and our future? The Toyota Research Institute isn't a department or sector within Toyota charged with getting robots on the market for sale, but rather a sector within Toyota figuring out the problems preventing that from happening. Of course, and it makes sense. And finally, a company who admits to a sector within a massive global giant corporation that is pushing the advancement of humanoid robots. But before we go ahead and start spreading rumors that Toyota has some sinister sector within the Toyota Motor Corporation pushing the advancement of humanoid robots, all of which is said, of course, with humor. Anyways, I find it very interesting because I found this video from the Toyota Research Institute that showcases soft touch features with their robots and the development of Toyota's TRI robots and their capabilities. Anyways, okay, I'm going to play the clip. Check it out. At TRI, we're developing several new capabilities that we believe will lead robots to assist and empower people in their homes. And more importantly, it'll allow older generations to age in place longer and with dignity. Previously, we demonstrated our advances in manipulation capabilities. In particular, we showed our simulation tools and how those tools can give us the robustness that we need for a robot to do a specific task, like loading a dishwasher. In addition to enabling simulation capabilities, we're also developing mobile manipulation that allows the robot to move about the home and learn a wide variety of tasks from a human teacher. Which object shall I put away? Cup. Performing tasks in homes is extremely challenging for robots. Each home is unique with a large number of objects arranged in different configurations. We demonstrate the effectiveness of our approach by presenting results for a variety of tasks under different environmental conditions in our lab and in real homes. So, rather than try to program a robot to do a specific set of tasks, like an assembly line robot, our robot can learn new skills from a human teacher. We teach the robot in VR, or virtual reality. The teacher can see a model of the robot as well as the live data from the robot itself and it uses that information to teach behaviors that are linked to things in the environment. And that's important because rather than teach the robot a set of direct motions to a very specific instance of the environment, we teach the robot parameters. That's part of a set of safe behaviors, and that's robust to a changing environment. For example, we can teach the robot how to open a refrigerator. We show the robot where to place its gripper, how to hook the handle, and also how hard to push. We can teach the robot about what objects in the scene are important, or what parts of an object are important, whether the object is a bottle or the refrigerator handle. Whichever the object is, wherever the object is, we can teach the robot how to handle it. We can also teach the robot about uneven surfaces in the home, those that it can drive over and those that it cannot. And we can teach it these things with just a very few examples. And once one robot learns that skill, it can pass that skill on to other robots. We call this fleet learning. Like simulation, we believe that teaching is a key capability that will enable robots to be useful in homes. We designed and built this robot with this type of teaching specifically in mind. It has many redundant degrees of freedom. It can move its body around like a person within a very large workspace. It automatically configures its posture to perform the behaviors being specified by the human in VR. Our robot has high resolution visual and depth sensors with a very wide field of view. We leverage machine learning techniques to enable the robot to learn from a single demonstration. In this case, more is not necessarily better. The robot is trained to recognize simple audio commands and associate those with behaviors. Where shall I put the object? Cabinet. When the robot is taught a behavior, it associates that movement with what it sees in the scene before it. It then combines visual and depth data into a 3D representation of the environment. It then plans collision-free motion for its body and arms. If it detects something unexpected, it can stop, react, and recover, and then plan again. The robot can link actions to visual cues, which also applies to how it navigates the environment. 
The robot does not need to build a global map of the home, but rather it can navigate like a person. It chooses what action to take based on its visual memory of what it has learned. It's important to remember that our robots are research prototypes, not product concepts. We choose tasks for the robot that we believe motivate the right algorithm development. While the robot must currently be taught every behavior for a specific situation, we're working to generalize beyond individually taught tasks. Ultimately, as one robot learns a task in a home, all robots benefit collectively. Rather than focus on developing robots that replace human activity, we think it's better to focus on robots that amplify, empower, and assist human performance. Home robots are an important part of the solution to help an aging population live longer in their homes and to improve quality of life for everyone. At TRI, we are inventing and proving the key robotics capabilities that will make this a reality.